Hello, and welcome to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and I thought I would start the Conquering Finale series out with a set of videos called Nailing Navigation. Now, navigating for around Finale is fairly simple, but uh, there are some tricks to this that I thought would be worth mentioning, and actually, if you're a longtime Finale user, uh, this, this will be worth a, a look because there are some things you might not even know about. So, And first up is the Tool Palette, the ubiquitous Tool Palette in Finale, which is this thing in the upper left corner and um, this is where we're going to be switching between tools and uh, if you hover over a tool long enough at least on a Mac you'll actually see the name of the tool so this is a good way to actually learn the tools and uh, for this tool palette it's simply a question of clicking on it and you'll switch to that tool pretty obvious uh, what may not be obvious is that you can actually move this tool palette anywhere you want if you just grab and drag that um, top portion of it so it doesn't have to live in that upper left corner and actually we can reshape it too. So if you go down to the bottom right or bottom left corners here and click and drag, you can actually kind of shape it into any uh, form that you want. Now for me personally, I prefer to see it horizontally in one row and I like to see it all the way in the bottom left corner here. So for the Conquering Finale videos, this is where you will see my tool palette. Now some of these tools have sub tools. The simple entry tool, for example, has a simple entry sub palette and the uh, Smart Shape tool has a Smart Shape sub palette, as does the uh, Special tool has a Special tool sub palette. Um, and when you switch between that one of those tools and another tool, it usually goes away. Um, that's because of a setting that I'm about to show you. If we go to uh, Finale Preferences here, um, the, we're looking at the bottom section here about palettes and backgrounds. And the first four options here have to do with the uh, tool palettes. Now the first option, use large tool icons. I actually prefer to have this checked because it will make that tool palette just ever so slightly larger, um, which is easier on the eyes, particularly on laptop computers. The next two options here, close subsidiary palettes when leaving tools and close simple entry palette when leaving tools is just what I showed you when you leave those, um, you know, the simple entry or the smart shape tool, it will uh, uh, eliminate that uh, those palettes, those sub palettes as well. But if we uncheck these, we can actually get Finale to sort of um, let those sit there. So if we go to the simple entry palette, you'll get the sub tool. And then if we switch back, it'll stay there. If we go to the smart shape tool, we get that palette, that sub palette, and it will stay there. We switch to the special tools and we get that special tool sub palette. This can be handy because then you can actually just quickly switch to crescendo to add a crescendo or go back to simple entry with a quarter note. Um, but you can see the disadvantage is that uh, it does uh, take up some room. And with these sub-palettes, we can actually, you know, move them around the same way as the main tool palette if we want. And um, we can always just close them uh, manually as well. Put these back where they were and close them. Now, for me, I just personally prefer to have these options checked so that uh, things get closed. And then finally, the Show Rest Palette in Simple Entry. You saw that when I switched to Simple Entry, you just see the notes. But if you check the Show Rest Palette in Simple Entry, um, now when you switch to Simple Entry, you'll get that Rest Palette to appear. Now, if you happen to have that unchecked and you need that Rest Palette for some reason, um, we can actually add it manually in the Windows menu here. There's an option for Simple Entry Rest Palette, and that will uh, make that appear as well. Incidentally, if you, for some reason, you lose your main tool palette, if you accidentally click that red button and it goes away, do not panic. We can always get it back. Just go to the window menu and it's this option here, main tool palette, or there's actually a key command, command T, um, and that will get you your main tool palette back. There's another way to switch between tools and finale, and that's actually with the tools menu at the top of the screen here. We can directly switch to any tool that we want. So just switch to articulations, and you'll actually see that it will change it in the tool palette as well. And uh, with the tools that have sub palettes, you'll actually see sub menus as well. So simple entry, you can uh, simply click whatever uh, rhythm you need. Same with the rest, smart shapes, uh, just select whatever you need, and the special tools. Now, it is a little bit slower to kind of switch tools this way. Um, however, I did find, uh, find out eventually, or figure out eventually, that the advantage of this is that um, certain programs like scripting programs like Keyboard Maestro, it's much easier to program a tool change um, from this tool menu than uh, trying to have Keyboard Maestro find the tool in the, in the uh, tool palette. So there is some usefulness for this. And uh, finally, you'll notice one thing about this is that the selection tool has a keyboard shortcut of Command-Shift-A. And uh, so if we're in any other tool, we can press Command-Shift-A 
to get us back to the selection tool. Now, this shortcut it only exists on the Mac. There is no shortcut for the Windows. However, um, it doesn't list it here, but if you're in any other tool besides the selection tool, the escape key will always get us back to the selection tool as well. And that is true on a Mac or a uh, PC. So um, that is definitely universal, the escape key. And finally, uh, another way to switch tools is actually if you're in the selection tool, you can double click pretty much any element within the score and it will automatically switch you to that tool. So if I double click this piano here, which is an expression, it will switch me to the expression tool. And uh, using this method and the escape method to get us back to the selection tool, we can kind of navigate around the tools fairly quickly. You can't double click an element if you're in uh, the, if you're in the Smart Shape tool, for example, you can't cl double click a an expression to switch to the expression tool. It doesn't work like that. You can only double click if you're in the selection tool. Um, so this is actually my preferred method of switching tools. And what I do is I have a, a programmable mouse that has a few buttons on it. And one of those buttons is the escape key. So without even using the computer keyboard, I can double click an element to switch to the text tool here. Press escape with my thumb double click to the expression escape. So uh, as you can see, I can kind of navigate between uh, the tools fairly quickly that way. And there is a way if you prefer to switch tools with uh, keystrokes, um, but we do need to program that. And this is where it's, it gets a little odd between Mac and Windows. Um, Mac allows you to have up to eight, or Finale with Mac allows you to have eight uh, shortcuts for tools, and Windows allows you to have 11. Just has to do with the way that they, um, they uh, program these on the keyboard. So uh, I'm on a Mac, so I'll show you how to do this on a Mac. So we're going to press Option, Control, and any letter in the keyboard from the in the middle row, from F all the way to the right to the Quote key. That's eight different keys. So if I were to press Option, Control F, you'll see this master tool palette selection come up. And from here, we can uh, um, uh, program any tool that we want. So if I wanted to art, uh, program the articulation tool, just select it and hit OK. And now to use that keyboard shortcut, all we need to do is press Control and that corresponding key. So Control F will switch me to the articulation tool, just like that. And again, Escape will always get you back to the selection tool. On a Windows, it's a slightly different. Um, to program, you would press Shift plus any F key from F2 through F12. F1 is not usable for some reason, I guess. And um, to, uh, to use a shortcut on Windows, just press F2 through F12 uh, with no modifier. So F2 through F12 will use those, uh, those uh, keyboard uh, shortcuts that you just programmed. Now, the one thing to know about these uh, keyboard shortcuts is that they are document specific. So if you were to switch to a different document on your computer and try one of those shortcuts, it will not work. You'd have to reprogram them for that document, which is a little strange. I feel like it probably should a pr be a program preference, but for some reason Finale uh, did not do it that way. And finally, here's a trick that I, I bet a lot of uh, longtime Finale users don't know about, is that you can actually move the tools in the tool palette around, and we can program different master tool sets. So in the View menu, there's an option here down uh, about in the middle called Tool Sets, and you'll see that currently the master tool set is selected. Now this master tool set is uh, pretty much set. Um, so if you were to quit Finale and, and come back to it, um, your tools will be arranged in this order. Um, however, we can actually program some uh, custom tool sets, up to three of them, one, two, and three here, um, with a different order of the tools. And w the way that we go about this is with the shift key held down, what we can do is just grab any of the um, tools here and switch places with another one. You just saw me move the staff tool, um, switch place with the hand grabber tool, and I can do that back. Now the weird thing about the way this does this is that it, it, the tools will switch, so you can't actually. What I kind of wish it would happen is that you 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 know move this all the way to the left here, and everything would slide down. But it doesn't work like that. The the staff tool and the zoom tool switch places with each other. So it is a little tricky to kind of um, rearrange this because you always have to switch things like that. But that's how you would do that. And then if you make some changes, like let's say we're going to just switch some tools around, switch the simple and s uh, speedy entry tool, switch the expression and the um, smart shape tool here. Um, <coughs> what you can do from here is program a custom tool set using option, the option key, 
and then going back to that view menu when you go to tool sets now it will show you your, you have the option of programming tool sets if I actually release the option key you'll see that now it says select press it you see programs uh, so we can actually just hold down option and press program tool set and now the uh, the tool set um, is selected with this uh, slightly rearranged order so if I go back to the master tool set you'll see them go back to the way they originally was uh, one change I made was the uh, smart shape was on the I just switched the smart shape and the expression tool so I'll go back to that tool set number one and you'll see those switch around again so that is sort of an interesting um, uh, thing that you can do is that you can actually set up your your tool, your tool palette in several different ways um, I guess depending on, on how you want to uh, to go about your workflow now with these tool sets what's interesting is that the tool sets are program wide so um, you know if, if you go to a different document um, you'll have the same tool sets it's weird that the tool sets are program wide but the the keyboard shortcuts for the tools themselves are not program wide um, it's just the way it is and unfortunately you, if you're in a different tool set you can't also have a different set of keyboard shortcuts so uh, let's see if I'm in the uh, select the, yeah the tool set one here for me control F is still is still gonna switch to the articulation tool despite the fact that um, this tool set is different it would actually be kinda neat if each of the tool sets could have its own set of keyboard shortcuts but alas um, I have I've searched and tried and it doesn't quite work like that so there is some sort of flexibility with the tool sets and the keyboard shortcuts it is a limited in a little bit of a way but um, Hopefully now you sort of understand that a little bit better. Maybe you can uh, incorporate some of these things into your workflow. And let's see, I think that covered it. Um, yeah, so this is the, the uh, all you need to know about the, the main tool palette in Finale. And hopefully this, this has helped. So um, thanks for watching and come back and we'll start looking at some of the different types of views in Finale. Um, all right, so thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.